Hey, it's Dave at Bullpen Cycles, and we are at EuroCycles in Daytona to buy some vintage airheads. And oh boy, another red BMW. You know how much I love red BMWs. Hey, it's Dave, and I'm an airhead. Well, not really, well, I might be an airhead, but these are BMW airheads. That's the BMW flat twin air-cooled motor. Started out in 1923, but I think that would include the flatheads which don't have overhead valves, but are still horizontally opposed. Now, oh, I'm getting my ears mixed up. I think this is a 72 R75 slash five. They started out with a slash two, then as they modified became a slash three slash four. Slash five came out in 1970. I think they ran till 73. So this would have been comparable to the uh, Moto Guzzi 750 Ambassador, which I think is a little more sporting and is also a great bike. I have this old one over here. Uh, well, it looks old, but it. I think it's a 73. The difference, this is an R50. It's also a slash five. But here you have the direct slide carburetors versus the CV carburetors with a diaphragm and a slide. This is not an R100 RS. It's an RT that was converted to RS spec. Has a lot of work done on it. Uh, I'm ambiguous about it. What I got. These all came from our local BMW dealer. They're under new management. So they called me up and I bought this bundle of vintage bikes. The one I wanted was this R100 GS. This is the beginnings of the adventure bike. GS. Now, if my German is right, I think that's Gelundestrasse, and it has an umlaut, so you have to say Gelundestrasse. At least if I remember my German teacher, Frau, hmm, what's her name? I don't remember. So they call, they call this the toaster tank because of the chrome side panel. And yeah, it does look better than the standard tank. But this is more reminiscent of how they were in the earlier models. We're gonna take this one for a spin because you know how much I like red BMWs, which goes, oh, let me tell you this. The last, the last video we did where I reviewed a BMW, our red K1, I got so much hate mail. I get hate mail to this day. Let me read you some. So, these are some of the comments I got after reviewing my K1, which as you know, I bought it as a barn find. Never rode it before. Had a bit of a bit of an experience putting it back on the road. Well, here's what readers say. You'd think I kicked a puppy. <coughs> Most stupid introduction of a bike I've ever seen. You have no idea of that bike. Start with a negative opinion and next need help from a BMW specialist. You start the engine not knowing to touch 
both brakes to get that red light off. Yeah, that's the ABS light. Every ABS works differently, especially the early ones. You drive in a zone you've never seen before with an engine that seems to run on old gas. You turn left at the crossroad, shows you have no idea how much revs you need to use the clutch, oil, and coolant. You talk about the prices of spare parts, ignoring that the same parts for Japanese bikes of that time are easy 35 to 45% more. Oh, really? I've had a K1 for eight years. 173,780 miles until it was stolen. They stole it. One clutch, some brake pads, lots of tires, one battery, and one bearing. There are a lot more who, by the way, didn't need help of a BMW mechanic, who drove these more than 125,000 miles without a problem. In this case, the sucker was not the bike or the one sitting on it. That's what he said. Well, you know, we're in the same galaxy. We're all having fun on motorcycles, but I'm sorry, Andreas. We're in different worlds. That's okay. Here's another one. This is Gary. And these guys put their whole name on. That's cool. So I'm not going to rip them up. Geez, what a crybaby. Why the hell does he still own it if it's as bad as he says it is? I guess the next thing he's going to blame BMW for the low air pressure in the tires. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, maybe. So you buy a classic bike that needs restoration. This is a guy named Delta. It's not his real name. Not only that, you buy a classic bike that had a ton of technical details to perform what the makers wanted her to do. Not only that you buy a classic bike, it was the flagship of BMW at the time. You rant about the prices of parts, of the time it gets to get a part of a rare motorcycle, and for the exclusivity, I can't even say that, exclusivity, I can't even say, of the parts used. God job, I guess he means good job. As for the riding part, well, that's why we test drive bikes before we buy them. Well, you know, not always when you're buying a 40, 50, or, ah, man, I got bikes in there that are 60 years old. They didn't run when I got them. Anyway, I get more mail from that video than any of my other videos. And that's okay. The one thing I would have thought on my other video, I didn't get one comment on the Gary Nixon bike. That's a special bike. Yeah, you guys are flaming on me because of the K1, but not one comment on the BMW Battle of the Legends series. That was a significant series. That did a lot for BMW's history. Some race pedigree. I wish they'd get back into stuff like that. Not one comment. Everyone just says I should love that bike. Oh, by the way, I scratched it with my Osa. So now it has a crack. And a scratch. Ooh. So they call this a second generation GS. And I'm going to guess that has to do with the output shaft, the power lever, rear output versus a mono lever. See the U-joints on both sides, both ends. They made a third generation too. I'm not sure what the differences are. This came out after the BMW started winning in the Paris to car. Paris to car version would have been an R80 GSPD and a, an R100 GSPD. This is a stand. Oh, here comes the ice cream truck. Look at that. Does your motorcycle shop have an ice cream truck? So this one has 
33,000 miles and that's that's low. We're going to see what it rides like. I've never even so much as started this bike before. Let's assume it runs. So they tell me it's about 33 inch seat height. Back in the day, that would have seemed like a lot, but that's nothing now. I'm looking at the brake and the shift. Well, Taco's shift on the right has to old Triumph. So here's first. I must have rode that 69 Triumph for 20 plus years. 29 inch seat height, 29 and change maybe. So when these came out with 33 plus inches, I thought they were tall. But by today's standards, that's nothing. about my microphone I have to work on getting a better one I do not feel vibration coming from this motor nice upright seating position very comfortable seat granny shifts nicely there going in the first not unusual nice slow low feet idle perfect here's your crankshaft I always think that's cool let's go this way I don't remember where this goes
my BMW. This is more bike than my new Kawasaki. And it's just as comfortable. It's a slightly lower seat height. I still got a 21 inch front wheel. It's still a great platform today. This might be a keeper.